Hey there, Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, we're going to continue with our series on 2545 sharps by talking about case forming. Now, in the last video, I showed essentially doing factory style loading with brand new 2545 sharps brass and Spear Hot Core 87 grain bullets. This time, we're going to start with 5.56 brass. I've got a bag of 250 here. We're going to form that into 2545 sharps. So that's the great thing about this caliber is it might be a specialty caliber, but you don't have to buy specialty caliber brass. We can take either 223 or 556 and make our own. Now you can make your own brass. You can form it with either a sizing die like the, the Redding sizing die that I used or RCBS has a three die set that it has a sizer D primer, has an expander, and a cedar. So that's the setup that I'm gonna show you in this video, is we're gonna use the expander to punch out the case neck initially, and then we're gonna follow that up with the sizing die. It has an expander ball, and it bumps the shoulder. It gets the brass just right so that we're gonna be able to load that. Now that forming is a one-time deal. Once we form our 223 or 556 brass into 2545 sharps, we just have to keep it separate clean it, we can reload it, pretty much the standard number of times that you would with 223 brass. I'm still experimenting with that. I've transferred my reloading setup for 2545 sharps, I showed you in the last video with the Redding dies from my Pro Checker 7 over to my Pro Checker 5. So I'm gonna show at the end of the video, taking some of the brass that we formed and doing a bit of loading with that same H335 and Spear Hot Core 87 grain load just to show the full complete process from forming to, to loading. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is make sure we've applied plenty of lube because case forming is pretty intensive on the brass. And so I've got my brass here. I've got a really kind of crappy old towel here. This is my standard case lube towel. It's seen a lot of spray lube. And I'm using spray lube here because basically I don't want to go ahead and roll each each case or you know take a q-tip and insert it into the case mouth now last time i did a whole batch of this 250 it was a little light on the lube so i've got dylan uh, case lube here dcl and i'm gonna spray it pretty well for multiple directions to make sure i get my necks nice and good okay and i'm just going to kind of let that sit for five minutes per the instructions and then we'll hit it up with a good second coat as well, hopefully to get the outside really nicely and then also get the inside real well. All right, it's been five minutes, so I'm gonna hit this up again, kind of trying to get it from all different angles. Gotta get those case mouths good and, and lubed up since that's where a lot of the friction is, is, is on the inside. Now this is the step where I seldom get this without spilling a few cases, but I'm just gonna pour this into the Wow, I think, yeah, that was success. That's great. Now we're uh, now that we've got our case lube dry, we're ready to, to form these. So let me go over what happens here. There's a two-step process that the brass is gonna go through. The first is, is the expander. So if we do the expansion, we can feel the friction of that case mouth going through that stage. Now let me just show you real quick what that does. So we're gonna start with a case neck diameter, inside diameter of about 216 thousandths. Now we're up here at 252. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the sizing die. Let's see where we're at here, okay. So it's still at about 251. So now we've got our shoulder that's set back. You know, go ahead and wipe off the lube. This is a super critical part of the whole process is to use your case gauge as your measure of whether or not your forming has been successful. So I've got the Ellie Wilson Custom 2545 Sharps case gauge here. And I'm looking at this, I can feel and I can see that we are flush or slightly below flush with the top step here and above the bottom step. And I also need to compare this with a piece of factory 2545 sharps brass 
or look at the case gauge and it looks like our trim two length is well well within spec so that's all it takes and with the progressive press we can basically just go through this process as if we were progressive reloading adding a new case each time and having one kick out each time so let me show you that next so i've got seven stations here on the pro checker seven and we're only going to use two but that's fine because each time we go through one cycle we just add another piece of brass careful to bottom the press all the way because that's our confirmation of shoulder bump if you will and that's about all there is to it you don't want to go too fast i had some case shoulders collapse and i, I didn't actually have enough lube last time either but uh, it's going a lot smoother this time this way we're not going to have to worry about hand lubing each case that just feels way too slow to me feels like a pretty fast and efficient process and i love the ability of just buying a bag of 250 off the shelf cases just being able to go through this single process not have to worry about swaging primer pockets or trimming for the initial shots so i did measure compared to the factory 25 45 sharps brass and it's actually five to ten shorter so we should get at least one firing without having to trim another bonus Okay, so we have a fair amount of Dillon case lubes still on these cases that we just formed. And I'm still experimenting with this, but what I've found to work pretty well is I've just got a little, little bit of car wash here. And I'm basically gonna put like a, just a small, small dollop in there. And we're just gonna, we're gonna wash the DCL right off. Nothing fancy needed here. A lot of guys will boil this stuff off but you don't have to get all of it off. That's the thing. So I'm just gonna agitate the soap a little bit here. And then got my Frankfurt Arsenal strainer here. We can basically just uh, hose this off. That's gonna be plenty good. And then I could just even hold it together to get uh, the bulk of the water off. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and lay these out to dry now. So here we are with our same crappy towel. We've got our cases, which we've shaken out in the tumbler. We've got the heat set up a little bit in the studio here, and I've just put some blue towels down because it's a really sticky towel there. These will dry in no time, and we've got enough of the lube, lube off where we're gonna be good to go for, for loading. All right, now that we're done lubing, forming, and cleaning our brass, I've got a bin of 250 that I formed and cleaned and dried yesterday. It's time to load. So I got the Pro Checker 5 set up here, station number one. We've got expander ball only, just to make sure our case neck is dent free and perfect. It's gonna make sure that when we charge, which we're doing in station number three, we don't get any leakage. And when we do our seating, do a quick visual here in station number four, we have a perfect case neck. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my Spear 87 grain hot core. Our seating die is the last stage. We now have a completed cartridge that we've loaded with brass that we've formed our very own selves. Awesome. So I hope you found this video useful. I'm still learning about 2545 sharps and I'm gonna do some more experimenting with case lubes and, and different dies for forming, trying 223, trying some of my old brass. It's gonna be fun to do all that and to work up loads with all these different bullets, different powders, 
lots more coming and I hope that you'll stick around. So if you don't want to miss any of the action on ultimatereloader.com, please subscribe to my channel. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until then, happy shooting and happy reloading.